Hey, it's Mike here, and today a coronavirus update, but this is gonna be a little different in the sense that we're gonna ask some of the harder questions. We are going to, of course, look at the main numbers and update in terms of number of cases and deaths and how it's spread. We're also gonna look at a pretty shocking statistic that not many people have heard involving the wild animals in this whole case. And we're also going to be looking at a new potential animal that could have been the origin of the virus. And we're also gonna address the claim that this was a man-made virus in Wuhan. And finally, I'm going to ask the controversial question of has this coronavirus actually lowered the total amount of deaths in China? As a master's in public health student, I'm interested in the total public health impact of a disease. So I'm interested in analyzing this, but no, I absolutely am not hashtag team coronavirus. I think this is a horrible disease. I wish it had never happened, but it's still worth investigating. Now it's been a few weeks since my first video, which is linked below. So I wanna do an update on the basic numbers and basic concepts here. First of all, I poked fun at the officials in my last video for the uncreative name of just Novel Coronavirus 2019, and they've replaced it with an equally uncreative name, which is just Coronavirus Disease 2019. And the abbreviation for that is COVID 2019. You'll probably hear people refer to it as COVID a lot. And under that, there's been another name, which is just SARS Coronavirus 2, now just SARS-2. And that does make sense because the original SARS was another type of coronavirus and SARS is just severe acute respiratory syndrome, which this one definitely is as well, so SARS-2. And zooming out, it has been a global emergency for a while now. Statistic you've probably heard is now we've reached 80,000 total cases. We have about 3,000 total deaths. And in the US where I am, we've now had 11 deaths, probably more by the time most people watch this. Most of them have been Washington State and people are just flooding their Costco's, buying all of the water bottles there apparently, which doesn't make any sense to me because the disease doesn't spread through water and there's no risk of running out of drinking water. So I don't know, that's mainstream media for you. And in terms of how deadly it is, the WHO's most recent report said that we have a case fatality rate of 3.4%. So 3.4% of the people who contract the disease end up dying. And just to compare another coronavirus, MERS, that I referred to in my last video has a case fatality rate of 35%, but thankfully was much less contagious. The WHO also mentioned though, that just the flu is more contagious than this new coronavirus. It still remains most lethal in people who are older and the case fatality rate for people under 50 is only 0.2%. So this is hardly affecting young people compared to old people. And now for one of the most hopeful statistics we have here, and that is that 48,000 people have now officially recovered. The vast majority just had mild symptoms. All right, now let's investigate the uncomfortable question. Has this virus actually led to less total deaths than would have otherwise occurred? And we're gonna look at China for this because over 90% of the deaths have occurred in China and they've had the largest societal shift in behavior in business as usual, which has a death toll as you will see. All right, let's start with air pollution. Well, it is lower than it used to be in China. It still kills a massive amount of people at about 1 million people per year. And here's the map that sparked this question for me. Here's a map of the air pollution from NASA satellite images of, you know, January and February where people really started toning down economic activity. And I wanna say, yes, this was also during the Chinese New Year, but this was an unprecedented lowering of air pollution and significantly lower than previous Chinese New Year's. Since a reported 3000 people have died from the coronavirus so far, and there's about a million air pollution related deaths, nearly every day as many people die of air pollution as they have total from this virus in China so far. And these pollution effects are largely long-term, but they are not only, there are also short-term ones as well from this study, quote, epidemiological studies have demonstrated that both short and long-term exposure to air pollution increases the risk of stroke. And from this meta-analysis, short-term increases in air particulates coincided with increased hospital admission and stroke mortality. And to throw a number out there, let's say that the dramatic lowering in air pollution has led to a 10% lower death rate from those short-term air pollution exposures, then we would have 17,500 lives not taken from air pollution since the coronavirus started. And really just a 2% lowering air pollution deaths would save 3,600 lives. So that would actually exceed the amount that the coronavirus has killed. Anyway, we definitely need more numbers than a better analysis done than that, but you get the idea. Another persuasive aspect though, is traffic deaths, which in China amount to about 700 deaths per day. 
So if traffic just stopped entirely in China, it would take four and a half days to reach that 3,000 lives saved number that would match the coronavirus deaths. But obviously that's not happening, but there's definitely a clear reduction in traffic since this has happened. And so maybe it'd just be a slice of the pie lower. Let's just throw out another number. Let's say there's been a 20% reduction in total traffic and assuming that that equates to a linear reduction in death, then it would just take 20 days to save more lives than the coronavirus has killed. And again, at this point, it's been 64 days since the virus has started. And you still might be thinking, yeah, that 20% reduction in traffic seems like an overestimate to me. Well, according to Reuters, 500 million people in China have restricted movement, and that's 6.5% of the entire population of Earth. So we're definitely seeing a lowering in traffic. So if there's ever a peer-reviewed analysis on this, which there probably won't be, I would not be surprised if there's actually been a lower death rate in China since this has happened. Again, this does not mean that I'm hashtag team coronavirus. My heart definitely goes out to everybody who has suffered from this virus and died from it and their family members. But my heart also goes out to the people who have died in traffic accidents and have been victims of air pollution. I don't want anybody to get all Thanos up in here and think that we need to be exterminating part of the population. No, and we'll get to the man-made aspect of the virus in a second, but first I wanna look at an optimistic figure here that I have not seen spread very widely, and that is from The Guardian. They have now closed 20,000 wild animal farms. First of all, you're like, what, farmed? That makes no sense. How can wild animals be farmed? Well, these are wild species, non-domesticated species being farmed, which most people weren't even aware of was happening. I think people were imagining people like hunting these animals. Nope. They've instead been bred so that they can be harvested for meat. And we can bet that those are not humane conditions at all for those who think that humane conditions make it okay to kill an animal. Anyway, quote, China's wildlife farming industry valued at $74 billion has been permanently shut down. So it is now illegal to buy, sell, and eat these wild animals. So this is pretty huge. Hopefully it will prevent the next epidemic and is definitely going to be better for those wild animal species. Continuing on the topic of animals, do we have any news on the origin species that this disease has come from? Well, we do know that it originally came from bats. We also know that it transferred somewhere to another species and to humans. We just don't know what that species is. In my last video, I highlighted a paper that thought it might be the snake, but since then another lesser known animal has been implicated and that is the pangolin, which is a super cute scaly little anteater mammal. And it makes me extra mad that people are eating this animal as a delicacy because the Chinese pangolin and pretty much all the other pangolins are critically endangered and they're super cute. They also appear to be the most highly trafficked mammal in the world. That's because we're trying to conserve them. Anyway, in terms of the origins from the New York Times, quote, data mining of genomic data posted in the last 12, most importantly from the October report on pangolins, indicated that a portion of a coronavirus in pangolins was nearly identical to the one in the new virus. That portion involves the way that the virus invades human cells, so they think that the bat virus combined with the pangolin virus sort of remixed into a virus that can infect humans and what better place for that to happen than a wild animal market. But I also wanna mention that a lot of the demand for pangolins is not just meat, it's also scales which have been erroneously believed to have medicinal benefits. They don't. They're used in 77 different traditional Chinese medicines but the reality is they're basically chemically the same as fingernails. So how about next time you just, just save your fingernail clippings and then use those. Just ground them up. In fact, I will sell you mine. And this is important because while it's illegal to be selling pangolin meat for eating in China, and it has been for a while, it's still legal for it to be an ingredient in Chinese medicine. So they can be shipping large quantities of these scales around. And of course that drives a illegal trafficking market. And regardless of the animal, all signs still point to that original infection spreading point being that wild animal market in Wuhan. And no, the pangolin was not listed as one of the animals there, but it could have been there illegally, or one of the merchants who sells those wild animals could have been also selling pangolins somewhere else or smuggling them or something. Finally, I just wanna emphasize that this pangolin theory is just a theory. It hasn't been fully substantiated yet. And it took a long time to figure out that SARS came from those civets. So we probably won't know anytime super soon. Anyway, moving on to the topic of whether or not this is man-made. Some have said that it's too much of a coincidence that there is a lab that studies other coronaviruses like SARS in Wuhan. First of all, I just wanna say 
These are the scientists who are studying it and gleaning information that has been helping us fight this disease. And also it's kind of unfair to be blaming these people for it. Anyway, I'm sure that's not enough of an answer. But to further push the paranoia, a non-peer reviewed paper was posted saying that there was a similar sequence in this new virus to HIV. It was immediately pummeled by the international medical community and actually taken down by the author themselves. This whole thing actually prompted scientists from around the world to get together in the Lancet and say, quote, scientists from multiple countries have published and analyzed genomes of the causative agent, severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, and they overwhelmingly conclude that this coronavirus originated in wildlife. They get even more serious with, we stand together to strongly condemn conspiracy theories suggesting that COVID-19 does not have a natural origin. Really genetically, it's just way too similar to other previously documented strains in wild animals. And also the fatality rate. Why would you engineer one that has a super low fatality rate if you're some crazy scientist psychopath? I mean, MERS, again, 35%. So all of those things together, it's definitely not a man-made virus. But in the end, this has become a global emergency. It has affected a lot of people negatively. It has killed a lot of people, but thankfully now over half of cases have recovered. The case fatality rate remains pretty low. Hopefully it stays low as it spreads into other countries. And glass half full, it has closed 20,000 of those wild animal farms and it has made it illegal to eat these animals, which honestly is great for the animals and could have prevented a more deadly disease from happening in the future. And again, the coronavirus could have slowed our normal rate of human self-destruction and resulted in less deaths. That's probably the best way to put it. That's between that air pollution and those traffic deaths. Final point to reiterate my first video, the most lethal virus is certainly going to be coming from an animal and it's probably going to be either a swine flu or another type of flu. So please reconsider your choice to eat animals. All right, finally, finally, if you wanna help raise pangolin awareness, you can 3D print this articulated pangolin, which means it's, it can kind of bend and curl up. It's super cool and cute. So if that's your thing, go for it. All right, that's it for today. Feel free to like, subscribe. Let me know about uh, my investigation of the uh, total deaths here. Was it highly offensive or was it actually worth looking at? I think it was worth looking at. All right, feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.